Hey everyone, Jason here at Alarium Technology, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new enhancement we made to our servo accelerator block that allows you to specify the speed you want the servo to move in addition to the position. And this is kind of a cool enhancement because it allows you to do some additional things with your servos that you can't do with the standard library calls with Arduino. Well, you can, it just would require a lot of a lot more complex coding. So anyway, I want to introduce you to this. And uh, for those of you who recall, I mean, doing when we first came out with uh, our accelerate board, one of the first things we did was an accelerator block for this that runs in the FPGA hardware to control servos, giving you a lot more capability in terms of very fine resolution control without any jitter or any kind of twitching and be able to do a lot of them in parallel without burdening the microcontroller whatsoever. Not too long ago, we did another video where we showed how we could control 18 servos with a hexapod robot using one of our snowboards. I think I have that upside down. There we go. <laughs> one of our snowboards. And you can check that out on our YouTube channel as well if you want to see it. But what I wanted to do was show you how you can take advantage of this new enhancement for our servo accelerator block and give you some additional features and functionality when you're controlling your servos with our FPGA-based hardware. So let's take a quick look. Oh, and by the way, we're going to use Hexi once again. So Hexi is a hexapod robot that we got from Arcbotics. And the thing I like about using this is we're actually not even making it walk or using it as a robot necessarily, but we're really using it because it's got a bunch of servos we can control at one time. We can do a bunch of things with it. So you'll see Hexi again here in just a moment. Let's jump into it and tell you all about what's going on with the new servo accelerator block enhancement. So I thought we'd get started by reminding ourselves how you control servos in the first place in an Arduino sketch. And let's start by taking a look at the documentation from Arduino itself. So we'll grab the, uh, the documentation page here. Let me jump back to servo library. So this is the servo library page on Arduino's support site. And what we're going to focus on are these write and write microsecond commands, because these are the functions that actually move the servo into place. Let's look at the write command. And there's a little bit of example code down here that I've actually copied over into a presentation that makes it a little bit easier to look at. So let me bring that up and get that going. So here we have the include or the servo.h example code where you can control your servo using the write command. And up at the top, we see we've got the include servo.h library. You define the servo, attach it to a pin. And it's really this, this line here, this myservo.write and a value here for the angle that we're going to be focusing on. And so there are really two ways you can move a servo with the library. One is with this write command. So this just gives it an angle that you want to move it to between 0 and 180 degrees. You can also use a command called write microseconds, where you pass in a value between 1,000 and 2,000. That actually tells you the, the width of the PWM pulse that you want to send out to the servo, which also gives it a position. And so we've made changes to both of these in our code as well, in our new library and our enhanced functionality. So you can use either one. Sometimes people prefer one over the other. Now, in order to be able to use our the new functionality, we need to uh, add the capability or add our library to your sketch. And that's very simply handled by changing this include file at the top of the code. And you change it from include servo.h, which is the standard Arduino library, and you just change that to accelerate servo.h. And if you're new to our hardware and to accelerator blocks, we've got some other videos and stuff that talk about, you know, how to get our libraries, install them, and install our hardware. And so, you know, that's something that you can follow up on in our other videos. But the cool thing that we've done here is if you have already have code that's running Arduino stuff, or I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're doing servo stuff, you can just include our library. And uh, using our hardware, of course, um, if you grab one of our boards, upload your sketch to it, include our library, and then all the rest of the servo commands stay exactly the same. So it's really, really easy to use. So once you've included the library, um, now you can add this new speed variable, new argument to your commands, either whether you're using write or write microseconds. So this is what it would look like. You simply change from just sending that value of 90 in the case of write to adding a speed. Or with right microseconds, it's the same thing. And the speed values are going to go from 1 to 15, where 1 is going to be the slowest, and 15 is going to be the fastest that you can move the servo. So as, a, as an explicit example, you might do a servo right 90, 8, which 8 is going to be your speed somewhere in the middle there of the speed that the servo can move. And the speed of 1 here is going to be the slowest that the servo would move for a right microseconds call. Now... <clears throat> 
one of the things you can also do, even though I said, okay, you can call speed of one to 15, you can actually pass in a zero, but that's essentially the same as running it at full speed. That's effectively the same as not passing in a speed value at all. And so it just allows you, for example, if you're going to put these calls into some kind of a, a function where you want to have a variable that you're passing in there, you can still tell it to run at full speed um, by passing in a zero or it really just kind of ignores that speed value overall. Now, the cool thing too is this is, this new function will run is kind of backward and forward compatible between images and our libraries. So if you have an older image on your FPGA that doesn't have this enhanced functionality in the accelerator block yet, uh, you can still use this function and it's going to work just fine. Same thing if you have get the new image and you just want to pass it without this additional value. So if you just pass it like the right 90 without a speed value, that's going to work too. Okay, so I have this simple code file called speed, servo speed. And you can see up at the top here, I'm including accelerate servo. I'm also doing, I'm using the snowboard in this case with hexes. So we're doing some other stuff with the digital IO. In case you're curious why this Arduino.h is up here, it's because I originally created this file using platform IO under uh, Visual Studio Code, and it includes that Arduino.h uh, for some of the, the things it needs for compiling and whatnot. So if we go down here to the main loop, you can see that I, I loop through kind of a bunch of different things that we're going to do with Hexi. And the first one is this single servo function. And I want to show you this because this is kind of isolates the speed call and shows very specifically how this can work by uh, just using or isolating it to one servo. And we're going to so for focus on uh, servo number five, which is sort of the middle leg, if you will, or the, the west leg using the cardinal coordinates that, that we kind of do for describing Hexi. But the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to move that single servo using the standard call. We're doing a write. So we're going to write it to a position of 10. We're going to wait, and then we're going to move it back to 170. And you'll see what that looks like in the video. Now, as I mentioned before, you can pass in the speed value of zero. And when you do that, you effectively get the exact same behavior. So now we'll see that servo move, and it's going to move positions at the same speed as if you didn't pass in a value for speed at all. Now let's start changing up the speed a little bit. The first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to pass in this value of 15. Now to the eyes watching this, it's going to look about the same as not giving it any speed value because we're really running at the highest speed. And so you can see that. The next one we're going to do here is moving at a speed of 8, which is about, you know, somewhere in between and in, in somewhere in the middle and so you can see it kind of the slows down that motion and then the last thing we're going to do is pass it this slowest speed which you can really see the difference in how it moves now that's pretty cool to see on a, a single servo right so just with one single servo call you know you can really slow down the speed at which that servo is going to move now where this becomes powerful is when you want to coordinate a bunch of servos all moving at the same time and we're going to do that or show that with this function that I called flex, right? Because it's going to kind of move those those legs up into like, I don't know, flexing a bicep or something silly like that. So that's just <laughs> what I called it. But the first version we're going to see is going to run this flex command. And essentially you can see what's happening here is it's calling all of the, uh, the both two of the joints on every leg going all the way around hexi. And it's just moving them. And it's making all these calls just sequentially. Now, what actually happens when you're moving servos is it is kind of a blocking operation. So it moves one, then the next one, then the next one as it moves through these function calls. Now, if you're running it at full speed, it really looks like it's happening all at the same time because it happens very fast. And so we're going to see what that looks like when you just call that command. Now, if we move on to the next one, which is a function I called flex sequential, you can see that I've added just a little bit of delay, 250 second mil 250 millisecond delay between each one of those servo calls. So that allows us to visually see what's really happening when you call these all in order because there's a little bit of a delay going on here between each function call. So you can see each servo kind of sequentially moving into its position. And then finally, we're going to do a run through of one that I call flex concurrent, which is what the CON stands for concurrent. And now this is using this new feature of calling the speed when we do the right command. And the thing that's kind of cool about this is now we can tell it to slow down or to move at a certain speed. And, and it's really a non-blocking operation. So we can run through all of these servos, make that call all at one time, and they'll all start. There's, you know, arguably there's a little bit of a stutter to those starting, but it's, it's almost 
instantaneous in terms of when they all start and then they all move at the same time and you can see that very distinctly in the video when it runs you know you can see hexi all those legs moving all basically in parallel at the same time so again coordinated motion of all those servos and then the last set of movements that i put together here is using a function what that i call stagger and that essentially allows me to be able to give a speed to all of the different joints that we are moving on the leg. So that allows us to be able to kind of see what's going on in the way that I've done, done a couple of calls. If we go back up here and look at the main loop, there's a, a variety of staggered moves that we're making here where, you know, in one case we start, we go from front to back and then back to front moving fast in the front and then moving fast from the back going forward. And then another set kind of going around hexi with different speeds. And so again, the, the nice thing or the cool thing here is if we go back and we look at this function, when we call these, we actually, these are all happening all at one time. And in this case, it's calling a, a function called move leg, which, you know, goes and moves all the servos. It tells it what position to move all the servos for a given leg. But again, that's all happening at one time. So it's a non-blocking procedure to tell those servos where to go, but it gives it a speed that allows it to move. Okay, so the last thing we need to talk about is how do you get access to this functionality for your Accelerate Snow or Hinge Board? There are really two components that you need. One, you're going to need the new library, which allows you to pass in that extra speed argument. And the second thing is the hardware functionality. Let's talk about the library first. So the library is available through the Arduino IDE, just like you would install any other library to support boards you may be using or other libraries that we provide. So bring up Arduino, go to Include Library, and go up here to Manage Libraries. And it'll open up the library manager window. And once it's done updating the uh, information about the installed libraries, you can just simply type accelerate and servo. And it'll bring up the accelerate servo one. And the latest version of the servo library 2.1.0 will have this functionality installed in it. And then uh, as far as the hardware goes, the accelerator block there, at the time that I'm recording this video, um, we only have it released as an XB on our GitHub page that you can use with Open Accelerate. However, we are planning to roll out an FPGA image very soon that you'll be able to update directly to your FPGA through the Arduino IDE, just like you can with all the other images that we provide. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I will not release this video until it is available for you to be able to easily upload through the Arduino IDE and reflash that FPGA. So what I want you to do is look in the description section of this video and I'll point you to where you can pick up that RPD because we we may do a pre-release of it and make it available to you to be able to uh, upload your FPGA before we push a whole new board package out through Arduino. And if we do that, we'll give you the instructions in the description down below. I hope this helps explain how adding this speed function or speed feature enhancement to the servo library and to the servo XB can actually give you some additional flexibility and allow you to do some cool stuff with any servo projects that you're working on using our hardware. I want to say thank you for watching this video. Thanks again for your time. We'll talk to you very soon.